Hi everybody. Sometimes in the evening when I'm sitting on my couch watching some TV or YouTube with my wife and my baby, I'll peruse Craigslist just to see if I can find anything local. And occasionally I come across things that have been listed for three or four days and the price they want is a little high. It's not something that I need. And I'll throw them a low price at them just because some people are just like, they have no idea what they got. So, I came across an ad. Somebody was selling something, I believe it was for $100. I sent them a message. I said, would you take 50? I'm expecting to say no and eh, no, no sort of point back. He replies back about an hour later, sure, come get it. So I did. And now I'm going to show you what I came and got. Alright, so I, like I said, the ad said 50 or 100 bucks. I offered 50. No problem. I went for a nice little drive Saturday afternoon, about 20 miles south of us, down in Pittsburgh, and to, up in the hills and stuff. It was pretty nice. So, what did I come across? Well, I came across this. What? Well, what is that, Millie? From what everybody tells me, it's spreadsheet cartridge. Okay. And this. And obviously, this is a manual for a printer. Okay. Still. Still no mind-blowing thing yet. And this. Very, very dirty. Very dirty Commodore 1526 printer. It's broken here, but uh, no, everything's still there. Still nothing mind-blowing. And this. Commodore 1541 disk drive. No cables. Still not mind blowing, but okay, You're getting better. And this Commodore 64 bread bin. No cables. So 50 bucks for computer, printer, disk drive, some rando cartridge, and a manual. And there was also some, um, this is all in a box, a dirty box, a very dirty box, as you can see from this. And there was also some, um, Telephone wires and stuff mixed in the box. I got telephone wires still in the trunk. I got to throw those away. So I bought this. No clue if it works. Unseen. And I want to give you a little logic behind why I bought this before I decide to start tearing things apart and cleaning and testing. If you see something that's for sale on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or anywhere where it's pretty clean, and the person says, I mean, I mean, pretty clean. It doesn't look, it looks like someone actually even tried to type on the keys, which obviously this doesn't. It's pretty clean, and the person says, untested. Uh-uh. It's been tested, especially if it has the cables with it and the power supply. It's been tested, and it don't work, and they're trying to pawn it off on you as untested. Now, on the other hand, you come across something that's been sitting in a box, and it's got, what, a decade, two decades worth of grime all over it? And it's a complete system, computer, disk drive, printer, a manual. Nope, no cables or anything like that. All in a box. I'd say 99%, odds are 99%. This was taken off of a desk back in the 80s and put in that box and stuck in an attic. Or stuck in a basement. And it's just sat there. And somewhere along the way, that box got separated from the box with the cables. So, is this going to work? We don't know. Is there a chance this is going to work? Oh, hell yeah, this is probably going to work. This is probably going to work perfect. Because you got to, again, think about how people work. If you have a computer, let's go back in the 80s, early 90s. You have a computer like this. This ain't a $5 computer back then. It was a couple hundred bucks. It was an investment in your family, invested money into this thing. And if it broke, you would have got it fixed or you would have gotten rid of it or replaced it. But if it still worked, you would have put it up and left it there because you paid money for that thing and it worked and you put it up and you don't want to get rid of it. And now, somebody is getting rid of it because nobody cares anymore. So what we have here is a Commodore 64 and it's not my favorite computer, I'll admit that. I really 
don't like the Commodore 64, it, uh, the specs are great. I mean, it really does have a lot of power. It's a really nice computer. The games are great on and everything like that. But I'm kind of biased because I grew up like in the Atari. So Commodore was our, our mortal enemy, the commies. They were coming to get us. We didn't like the commies. and We didn't like the crapples. We just liked the Ataris. And I fight that. I've had so many Commodore 64s, so many Commodore 128s, plus 4s. I've never had a Commodore 16. I've never had a pet. But I get them, and it's like, okay, you go now. <laughs> but I'm going to try to clean this one up and fix it. I'm going to make it work, and maybe, maybe, maybe I'll keep it. So this video, I'm going to break this down into multiple videos. This video, I'm not even, I'm not even plugging it in yet. And just so you know, this, I'll show you. Over the past few years, I come across Commodores. I came across a haul of Commodores um, three years ago at the local Goodwill in Pittsburgh. It's local enough for me. And I got 13 Commodores, 12 disk drives for 200 bucks. They had no idea what they had. $5, $10, piece, 200 bucks. And I, I shit you not. I took them home and I cleaned them and tested them. Out of those 13 Commodores, 12 worked. One needed me to take apart the keyboard and clean it. I sold that $200 worth of Commodores and the disk drives and everything else for $1,700 on eBay in pieces. So, yeah. I never kept one either because eh, I don't care. <laughs> oh, and I haven't had a Commodore 128D, the desk model one, which I actually do like. And the only reason why I like the 128 is because it runs CPM. But then as soon as you start using CPM on the Commodore 128, you realize how friggin' slow the disk drives are. Anywho, I brought this over here because I had this left over from the last time I was here, and I had to add a cable to it on the end. I haven't plugged this thing in yet, but I had to add a cable back in here. And before anybody screams and shits themselves and says, Don't plug it in, it will blow the thing up. I tested it, the power is good, and if it blows it up, I'll see you, who cares? This is a $50 machine. I'll plug this thing in. If it works, good. If I want to keep it, maybe I'll get another power supply. If I don't want to keep it, I don't want to keep it. But so, yeah. Anywho, we're going to take this apart here. We're going to see what's inside of it. And then we'll get rid of some of this mess on here. But I have a feeling this will clean up nicely. Shift lock works. That's a good sign. All right, so we're back here. And now I got my little container, which works great for screws. And my handy dandy screwdriver. I'm not going to open this up and take it apart. The Commodore 64 is held together pretty good with just three screws. And clips back here. you got to be careful taking them off because those, those clips break then, well doesn't stay together too well. So you probably want to be careful with that. I mean, they are built well, but the problem the Commodore 64 has, and basically the comp, and I'll probably get a lot of people upset at me about this, but the Commodore 64 started out as a, not a bad computer, but towards the end, the Commodore 64 is basically the Ford Taurus of computers. They just kept pumping those things out. Nobody gives a shit anymore what it looked like or how it ran. They just kept pumping them out. And then when, and then when um, people stopped buying the, the Commodore 64s, they said, well, we'll give it a new grill and call it the Commodore 64C. Remember, they did the same thing with the Taurus. And then towards the end, they really they made the Taurus look like somebody just, I don't know, I, I always said when I saw them, it looked like somebody pooped them because they were so rounded off everywhere. So, yeah, they, they did that with the Commodore 64. They just milked that thing as long as they could. But we're going to take this apart here. And I just got to remember, oh, that's why it comes up this way. Yep, you go, up you go. It's catching on the back. I just want to make sure I don't. See, back in here, it has these little clips in here, and I just want to make sure these clips let go. Way out. Break it. Hey, look what we got. We got something broken. I didn't do the shake test on this one. But we're going to get in there. Come on. Let go. Let go. There you go. That's good. Almost like it's glued in. Look how dirty this thing is. This is a dirty, dirty, dirty boy. Let's unhook this here. Um, are these keyed? I think they're keyed. By keyed, I mean, is there an empty... Is there a... Yeah, they are keyed. By keyed, do I mean, is there a... One of the pinholes filled in so that you can only plug it in one way. And yeah, they're keyed. Alright, so. You were there, and... You... It's not too bad down here, and um, I have, oh, look at that, look at that, every chip is socketed except for RAM. I'll remove the LED here so I can get this out of my way. And it's got this thing here, and an homage to Adrian Black, this will be coming out and thrown away because, <laughs> cardboard, seriously Commodore, cardboard. 
But look at this. Look how clean this is. Is the Vic? This is where the Vic Two is in here. I'm not gonna. I don't know why anybody wrote on it. It's kind of interesting. I mean, this has has it been opened? I don't think it's ever been opened. It don't look like it's ever been apart. But um, where was I going? Oh, I want to see if the Vic Two is socketed in here also. And yeah, I don't know the Commodore. I know all the parts in the Commodore. I've seen enough Commodore rebuilds and stuff like that on YouTube to know all the chips. But I really don't know all the chips off the top of my head. I mean, I'll take a stab at it here in a second. Let me just see what we got here in the Vic chip. Come on. And the Vic chip is socketed too. Will you look at that diggity? All right, so what we got in here, let's see. I'm just going to run them down real quick just so my Coleco Adam people know that I don't know everything. This right here, here these are CIAs. Um, one handles keyboard, one handles a joystick and serial ports and everything else. These three right here are ROM chips. One's a kernel, one's a basic, and one's a guy. I don't know. Um, this is the 6510, which is like the 6502, except I don't know if it has more instructions or less, but that's what the... the C64 years. This is the PLA. Or yeah, this is the PLA that um glues everything together, programmable logic array or something like that. And this right here is the SID chip. This is the one that everybody likes to gut got out of these things and sell. It's got a 6581 original SID chip. Look at that. everything's all socketed. I mean I am tempted to plug in and see if it works, but I want to take it apart first and clean it first and put it all back together, then find out it don't work. Then it's got the big chip there. Here's your RF modulator here. A whole bunch of stuff over here from Power Supply. These are your RAM chips in here. Um, which RAM chips do they got in here? Uh, da, 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 da. Trying to see. I can't tell the name brand of these, but they don't look like the MozTech, which seem to die in everybody. It's these right here. These four right here is the 64K of RAM. Yeah, I don't know. It looks almost like it's got an F logo on it. See that? It looks like it's got an F logo on the RAM chip there on the side. But that, not those mods text, so who knows. Um, I'm not sure which board I got here. Is this like early vision, second, later on? I can look this stuff up on here. I'm pretty sure somebody who knows the Commodore much better than me will be able to chime in in the comments. And if you're, if you're reading or you're watching and you're still with me, you haven't like disappeared yet, hop in the comments and tell me what, what board you think this is. Is this, what year model is this one? Is this a... Uh, 250407. I hear that a lot from Adrian. I don't know if that means that's just a standard board, if it's an early board. It's not a short board. Short boards have less chips on them. Uh, so I'm just taking these screws out here so I can pull it out of the out of the case. And also, while you while you're listening and while you're watching me ramble or listening to me ramble and watch me take this thing apart, be sure to subscribe. Click that subscribe button. I really don't ask that often for people to subscribe to the channel, but I've been stuck at 340 subscribers now for about a month and a half, and I'm, I'm, oops, you don't come off, and the other one don't come off either, I can put that one back on, it looks like, was that a case, was that a, I remember doing that before, this one over here, yeah, that was a case mode, this one right here holds this bracket on here, and that one holds a bracket on there, yeah, I don't ask for subscribers much, but I'm stuck at 340 subscribers, and, and I'd really like to get past that, I mean, I have on another video with the, with the, um, where's this go, I figured that one out. With that mouse for the Coleco out and the mouse adapter. Once we hit 400, whoever commented on that thing is going to be entered into the drawing to get that freebie. And if we never hit 400 subscribers, well, guess what? We're never going to get there. Do I, do I, I was going to say, do I have to take some notes out? Yay! Name about my son cardboard. I bet yeah, I can't even recycle this. This looks like I can cook a hot pocket with it. <laughs> really? Who said, hey, you know what? We could save a dollar if we use some paper in there instead. Well, what happens if it gets wet or cuts it on fire? Who cares? Was that before or after Drac Terminator left? Alright, so this is good in here. I'm trying to figure out... Where is that? Oh, here it is, here it is. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where this went. It goes over there. So, yeah, we're going to be breaking out the Gorilla Glue. Eventually. Well, let's get this down here. I got the case, this case out. So, I'll be washing this. Unfortunately, at my office here, I really don't have a big old sink I can wash things in, so I like to take them at home and do them. So, I won't video that. I won't bore you with me giving it a bath. I'll put that back on here for now. I'm going to brush this thing all down and look at it. Hey, where did you come from? You go there? Okay, you go there. Go somewhere. We'll figure that one out. Randos. We're getting random pieces of plastic here and there. I'll do a quick once-over look at this board here, see if there's anything missing or wrong with it, but 
I'm not missing, but if there's anything like obviously broken or jammed in there or something that's going to short it out the moment I turn it on, and then I should. I mean, again, this is another thing. Um, Adrian likes to pull these things off here too, and I should do the same. Remove the bottom off of here because I don't know. Can't see underneath to see how it is. This RF shield down here. I have to use the. Uh, he likes to get in there with a pair of pliers and just rip the shit out of them. Excuse my language today. But I'm, I'm not working with the Calicos. I'm working with the Commodores. So Commodore 64 users, they're, they're used to the rough and ready language. Yeah. It's, they don't. They're, they're, their highlight game is not Smurfs or Cabbage Patch Land like it is on the Coleco Adam. Don't get me started there. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move a few things around here. Well, actually, you know, I got one more thing I got to take apart here. Hold on a second. Let me set this off to the side here. Let's take the keyboard off the top here. Because, like I said, I should test this and see if it works. But I want to do this right. I want to take it apart and clean everything. Put it back together and then test it. And if it works, great. If it don't, then it's like, okay. I have to take it apart and figure out why it don't work. Um, I mean, part of me, I mean, a real big part of me is saying, plug it in, plug it in, Millie. No, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm not going to fight it. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to take the keyboard out of the case so that the cover can be taken home and washed in the sink and scrubbed down and made it look all pretty. And then I'll also crazy glue these pieces back on too when I come back. The keyboard on the Commodore is really nice. I will give them that. It's got a nice, very nice feel keyboard. Though, so if you watched my video from yesterday, well, I'm saying yesterday because that's when I filmed it and started editing it. Taking this thing apart versus taking apart the Clego Atom keyboard. <laughs> this is awful. I mean, all these screws everywhere and you got to unsolder stuff. And then as soon as you get up, boom, jack in the box. Yeah, this needs some good scrubbing. But yeah, look at that. See, the dust. See, now that is just all dust. That's just been sitting. And it, I think it reinforces my belief that. The, oh, ooh, don't lean too late. That this was a working system that they just put up and never and never used again. The kids outgrew it, whatever. They decided they wanted to go out and play baseball and get girlfriends instead of sitting in the house and playing video games. <laughs> I, <laughs> I shouldn't say that because some of you are like, hey, there's nothing wrong with sitting in the house playing video games. What I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to get this off here. Sometimes that thing will just pop off. This little ring right here. Once it pops off the LED, then the LED comes out. Sometimes it pops off, sometimes it's glued on there. There we go. Once you remove it, then you can get this out. See? It's kind of a sad design. Again, chintzy. You're making so many of these, and yet you nickel and dime the littlest things. The LED. I'm going to hold it in with a piece of plastic. What would have hurt to have this thing attached? So it can't come off, you know? Because I, mean? I have seen cameras where I guess that the kids push on whatever, you know, kids, kids, they push on that, or even this bump, and then the LED falls in, it's flopping around inside. Bad designing. And oh, oh, and here, here, you want bad design? See how easily accessible the joystick ports are on the Commodore 64? They're easily accessible, and when it's plugged in, the case is on, and you go to turn your computer on and you've just walked across the carpet and you go to touch the key, your switch right here, turn it on and your fingers touch these metals and pssst, sends a little bit of static in here. You know where that static ends up? In these CIA chips and it burns them out. Great friggin' design, Commodore. You couldn't take and just like recess these in slightly or get them away from the power switch. Or I don't know, put something on to catch static again. Build a nice computer and then really screw up on some of the things and don't give a shit or whatever. So right, here we go. We got this all apart here. This is going to be taken apart now. I got to take that off of there. I'm going to pull that off there. So let's just continue stripping this down. Uh, do I want to use my soldering iron to loosen these up? No, okay, why not? Okay, I'm going to have to pause this while I get my soldering iron all warmed up. All right, so now we're warmed up enough here, and let's just start heating these things up so I can get them off here. Oh, that's okay.
And there we go. And there we go. We should be loose now. All right. Again, this is so we can watch I Love Lucy without all the static from the pooter box. And I take them off. For one thing, I don't care if you watch I Love Lucy. I love I Love Lucy, but I don't care. And another thing, I'm doing my best to get rid of AM talk radio. And to do that, every time I work on a computer, I remove the RF shielding. That way, it makes it impossible to hear FM or AM radio around these computers. Everybody has to do their part. So now we got that off there. Let's just see what we got here. Make sure nothing's missing. Everything looks pretty good. I don't know if it's just me, but I like to stand things up. If I come in and I see the capacitors are laying down, I stand them up just to make them look better. As much as possible. I don't want to break nothing. So yeah, this is very dirty. It all has to be cleaned off. What I'll do is I'll spray this down with some micropro isopropyl alcohol. And uh, use a toothbrush and scrub them down really good. What's inside the RF can? Is that, that's not rusted or anything. No, it's just got some rust on the top. Plus, there's no rust there. And then underneath, I didn't see any damage down here, like rust or dirty flux and stuff to get up here. But it doesn't look like it's been taken apart. And as Adrian likes to say, it doesn't look like it's been reworked. So that's a good sign. There's no, like blobs of solder or places where it looks like they soldered it by hand instead of it being done by the machines when they built these things. Machines are, I don't know, did they use machines? I'm pretty sure they did, but it doesn't look like it's been reworked by somebody with a soldering iron and after the fact. So we're going to have to clean this one up and then give it a good test. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to clean it now. Okay, so I got my isopropyl alcohol in here and I got my dirty old toothbrush. I should get a new toothbrush. There's a lot of flux in there and stuff. But it still works. What I'm just going to use, I'm just going to clean, do some cleaning up here. It's actually, thinking about it, it's not that dirty here. It's dirty on the outside, but it's not that dirty in the board itself. It's just dirty where the. Where what do you call it? Where the dust could get to it. Give me some Q-tips over here. I'm gonna use some Q-tips in here. I just want to clean some of this mess up. Just, just do a little bit of cleaning. Make sure nothing's hidden under all this layers of dust. I probably should pull the chips out and reseed them, but I'm gonna leave that alone for right now because again. Do a test. And I don't have a diagnostic cartridge here. I did back when I did those 13 Commodores. I had a friend of mine sent me his diagnostic cartridge and I used it and it was really nice because even though they all worked, it was nice to be able to actually test everyone and verify that yes, they did work instead of just turning it on and saying, Oh, look, ready prompt. That don't mean it works. This thing tested everything, it's SID and stuff like that. Since then, I figured out how to test, well, I know how to test the keyboard, obviously, and how to test the joystick, obviously. If I can get into basic, if I can get into basic, I can test all of it. I even figured out how to test the sounds. I mean, there's, there's little programs you can type in basic that lets you test all the various parts. I know it's probably not perfect. There's probably some things about the SID chip that it's not testing, and there's probably some things about, like, color RAM and stuff that it's not getting completely tested. But it gives me a good idea. As you can see, I'm just I'm just giving this a good wipe down here with the alcohol. I probably could use Windex if I wanted to, but the alcohol dries faster, and I have an aversion to the to using Windex only because some people on YouTube that's their go-to thing for they got an old computer. Well, first off, let's break out the Windex. Yes, Windex does work, but it doesn't always work, and that being your go-to cleaning method kind of gives the wrong message to everybody else that all you need to do to clean your computer is spray some Windex on and then sit it outside in the sun to get rid of the yellow and it's perfect. You don't have to strip it down and take it apart. 
Because I, I'm sure that these people do strip their computers down and take them completely apart and clean the inside and stuff too. They just don't video it probably because they feel that nobody wants to watch that. But us nerds who like to watch these computer things on YouTube, that's porn to us. You take a computer part, we're watching you take that computer part, we're like, oh yeah, you take that off. Yeah, you, you, you remove that cover. Oh yeah, look at that keyboard connector. Yeah, that might be a little outrageous there, but you do get the point where I'm going at. It's things that we like to see. I mean, I had a person contact me from one of my other videos and says, you never mentioned in the video, what's in that little spray bottle? I'm like, duh, I shouldn't have mentioned it, and I didn't. Isopropyl alcohol. And if you want to know, why do you have a little spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol? It's called pandemic fear. When the pandemic hit, I started filling isopropyl alcohol bottles up like this. And I would spray my hands on the guy in the car and I'd wipe my face off too, just to make sure I didn't have no germs on it and all the other stuff. I never got sick, so maybe it did help. Yeah, these really got to be cleaned up better. much better than that. I'm going to have to really get in there. I'm going to have to get nasty on them. Let me see something here. Let me get a piece of my microfiber. This used to be a great cloth, but it's got a whole bunch of little pieces of plastic in it now because I used it to clean in right here to place it stuck on it. I used it to clean the table after I did some dremeling, and I didn't stop to think that, you know what? Yeah, this ain't going to help. The, all those pieces of plastic are now embedded in that cloth, so don't use that to clean anything that... Especially, like, don't use it to wipe off your face or dry your hands on. Ah, well, that would hurt. Yeah, th this is not a perfect cleaning job by any means. I mean, I might just take this home and just scrub it out in the sink. You know, actually, I'm going to do that. What I've done, and I will do with this one, is I'll take it home and I'll spray it down in the sink with very hot water, put some soapy water on it and spray it down again, then shake it and put it in front of the fan and get it nice and dry and it will look real pretty. But I just wanted to get some of this off of here because the more I tinker with this, the more I'm kind of curious as to does it work. So I set this to the side here because I could end this video real quick by just having that thing go when I plug it in. Then it'd be like, then the video will be, what can you do with a dead Commodore 64? Look at all this. Yeah, this, you're getting washed. I'm going to take you home and wash you. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother right now. All right, yeah, I'm going to set up my TV. We're going to see what we got. All right, so I decided to call it a day yesterday and went home. And first thing this morning when I came in, I made a video cable here. Took up to the TV. And... It's because the RF cable is, or the RF connection is really dirty, so I figured, give me a good clean connection, don't mess with video. So, we're ready to give her a shot and see what happens here. I did clean everything off. I cleaned the keyboard off at home in the sink, and I cleaned the case and stuff off. So, we're going to give this one a shot and see what we get now. So, here we go. Power on. Ah, oh, look at that. We got television we got 64k ram system 38911 so the ram's good how about the keys oh it makes noise i don't think that noise is supposed to do it they're supposed to make that noise i don't know maybe the volume's just too loud maybe my cable sucks I'll have to find the basic code to test the SID. Um, how do I change the colors? Uh, was it Commodore White? Good. I didn't. What did that do? Commodore Red, Black. I don't know. What I'm doing wrong there. Control? Oh, okay, it's control. I don't know what that can... Commodore key was doing. Alright, so we got this far. This is very good. So, we can continue rebuilding it. So, so far my theory of... Other than I need to test the... Uh, you know what? I'm going to pause for a second. I always say I'm going to pause. But I'm going to pause. I'm going to go online. I'm going to find me a couple of liner code that just test the SID and see what we got here. So, I'm going to pause for a moment. Alright, so what I did is I went online and I found a one-line program that tests the SID. So, let's just do it. Right, 
plus R and D. One, I gotta watch these. So easy. Didn't I? Five four. Okay. Two seven two plus R N D. Uh, what was the back key on this one? Um, okay. It's been a while since I typed on the Commodore and it has slightly different things. And you know, you gotta stop blinking. Here, go away. Thank you. You're throwing me off. Uh, times two five six. Go to. Oh no. So let's see what we get here. And I'm gonna turn the volume back up. Oh, what did I do wrong? 54272 plus R and D. Oh, comma, okay. Alright, now I know I can edit this, but yeah. Uh, you know what? Start over. Uh there we go. Why are you doing that? The space bar is a little stiff, it seems like. I forgot the comma right there. Oh, I forgot a bunch of things I see now. R and D one. I ran them together. Times two five. Comma R and D one. Times two five six. The spacebar seems a little stiff. Yeah, sounds like I got a dead Sid. Well, the Sid's very hot too, so okay, we need to replace the Sid. But that's alright. I'm not listening to it right now, so I'll have to chase down the Sid, which probably means buy one of those ones from China. But that's still damn good. Alright, so we know that works, so let's shut this off here. And we're going to start putting things together. All right, so I got the covers back now. And see, they cleaned up very, very nicely. So first thing I do is I gotta reattach that broken piece. I had two small pieces of plastic that came up, one that goes on to the base and one that goes on that here. So this one I gotta reattach first. I have my Gorilla Super Glue, which works very, very well. I'm gonna put this a little bit on the surface here. Come on, there you go, come on out, there you go, you know you want to, put that right there, take this right here, put some pressure on it, let it sit aside for a few minutes and that'll be good. Now this other piece goes right here, and I don't know if this is going to stay after gluing it, the reason I say that is because does it go here? Maybe it don't go there. It looks like it should. Goes right there, maybe. The reason I say I don't know if it's going to stay here is because there's going to be pressure on this thing. And you know what? I don't think I'll be able to glue that back in place. So I'm not going to try. So I got my bucket over here bolts. Oh, and if you notice the LED, well actually you haven't seen it yet. This is it. The LED is different. I was looking at this one and it was really cloudy and probably nothing wrong with it, but I thought, you know what? It would be just like me to have a broken LED and not know it and so they go crazy trying to figure out what's wrong with the computer. So I just swapped it. I put another, a new one in. That might be good, but I just swapped it anyways. Now I'll start reassembling the beast. I'm not putting the RF shields back in. Because as I said yesterday, I am on a mission to 
make it very hard for people to listen to AM talk radio. So as part of that mission, I need to make sure computers put out a lot of RF noise. So, I'm not putting the shield back in. Well, that and they make the computers run a little harder. And since these computers are old, you don't need to do anything that stresses them out. Some people will want to do that. They want to like keep it perfect. I want it to be perfect. The same way it was when they slapped it together on the assembly line. And that's fine. And you keep it that way. And one day you turn it on and it don't work no more because it overheated. And quit on you. I'm counting my screws here make sure I got enough of them. It almost seems like they changed screws on here. So I got a couple big ones. Did the big ones go up front maybe? Or I bet you they... Hmm, they might. To hold on to that dumb cardboard that was there. Maybe that's what it is. Who knows. But I'll switch it off. Put the big ones up front. Quite possible big ones come up here and the small ones going back. They seem to go in easier right here. So yeah, the big ones do go in the front. I would assume. Does it really matter? Probably not at all. And you know what? I just... <laughs> I see. No, 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 no. Big ones don't go. Big ones go in the back. There's four big and three small. I see. Way to go. Why? Who knows? There's got to be a reason, in the grand scheme of things, there's got to be a reason why they use different size screws in different size places, in different places. But yeah, here we go. You go in there. Alright, so the base is all hooked up. Let's take and hook our Alice. This is chintzy. Very dumb, very chintzy. I'm going to keep saying that because it is. Yeah, right, set that off to the side. Of, I don't carry this cartridge for one. I got a cartridge. You go, duh. Well, no, I was reading in the troubleshooting that if you don't have a diagnostic cartridge, you can use a cartridge. I was reading last night when I was sitting at my, dad, at my couch. You can use a cartridge to override the internal ROMs to see if it's a ROM problem. So I got a cartridge. I don't know if that would do anything, but I got one. Alright, now, we come over here, take the old keyboardy, and we put this in here, and we add all the screws. There's more screws holding this keyboard on than there is the motherboard in place in the computer. I, I'm just pointing that fact out. I don't know if it means anything. Make me wonder why. Why so many screws that hold the keyboard on, and yet the motherboard doesn't have that many screws? Guess the keyboard's more important. Maybe, or, or actually, you know, maybe it's because the motherboard sits flat on the case, and the keyboard hangs from the top of the case, so they need more support for when people are banging on it, because they get mad because, I don't know, Omega Race didn't work, or whatever, and the game was big. Back then, in the Commodore 64. Yeah, you didn't go in there. Sometimes if you put them in, they start to get hard to tighten up, back them out, and start them over. It can help. And then other times it doesn't make a difference. Like that time didn't make a difference. But if you back them out until you hear them go click, that means you've lined your screw threads up with the actual threads in the plastic so you don't take a chance on you hear the click you don't take a chance on breaking the plastic you're screwing into it doesn't always work but it's a, it's a good thing to do and I think it was Adrian Black that I saw said that so shout out to Adrian I like watching him sometimes Sometimes he seems to spend a lot of time on the same subject matter over and over again, and that might be great, but you got to branch out. you got to do other things. But like me, I, I am very, very big into the Coleco Atoms. That's my thing. But yeah, I'll use other computers, and I'll branch out and talk about them.
and work on them. All right now, this goes up here. I probably should have attached this first. Let's see this. I probably should attach this first, make sure it stays in there before I wrestle with it. I don't think you're not even seeing what I'm doing. Look at that. I'm sitting there going, going off, and you're not even seeing what I'm doing here. What I do is I push that little thing down in, and I guess this. I guess there's only one way it can go on. This causes the little plastic that the LEDs in to crimp and hold tighter. Yeah, sure it does. Maybe if I push it in a little. <laughs> yeah, sure it does. Sure it does. Well, you know what else holds things really tight? Makes them so they don't go anywhere? Cooper glow. So yeah, this will hold in place. A little bit of glue right here. Put it down in here and let it dry for a few moments. Alright, so now it's dry and I can attach it here. Oh, that's where you went. Your plastic went on the top. Well, I see where you went. Again, ew. It's a real chintzy design here. There we go. And again, I, I again, I can't say the word again, again, again. I know a lot of you out there love the Commodore 64, and I totally get it, because, like I said, it is a nice computer. It really is. I won't give you that. It's a really nice computer. It's just at the time growing up, it just wasn't my computer. It wasn't my thing. So, we're, we're all a product of our childhood, and my childhood was not Commodore 64. And I have so many times tried to sit down and say, okay, let me just use the Commodore 64 and see how it works. And I just couldn't get going. So now we're going to plug everything back in. Plug in power supply here. Make sure it's off. It's off. Right? Yes, it's off. Plug the power supply back into here. Give me my Vigio cable. And I don't have a speech impediment. I just say Vigio. And now I'm going to stop this and move the other camera back in place. And then we're going to see what we've got on the screen. Just make sure it works. All right. Now we're all plugged back in here. We're hooked up to the monitor or the TV. And let's see what we got going. Come on, baby. Yay, we still work. One thing that doesn't work is a SID. And I was wondering, let me just try it again. I was tempted to unplug the SID completely. So I don't have to worry about it. I may actually go back in there and do that. If you think I should remove the SID just for now because obviously it doesn't work. Let me know. I'm typing in that thing again. I just want to see if I get the same results. Just to make sure I didn't type in the wrong thing last time but yeah let me know in the comments do you think I should remove the SID or just leave it in there is it gonna hurt the computer being in there is it gonna like one day go poof that don't sound too good SID's definitely dead a lot of static now hang on I just wanna how do you break? Um, run stop? Okay, run stop. I want to plug in the audio cable. Okay, before I say positively that the SID is bad, let me just plug.
plug it into TV. Just on the off chance that I made a mistake connecting my audio up. I'm just going to switch it over to TV. Wow. The RF modulator is a mess. I'm just blindly typing run just to see if I hear anything. No. Alright, so we got that going here again. I'm going to just switch back to TV. What do I got to do? But I got down there. But don't matter. I'll just flip channels around. Let's just see which one it is. All right. So it doesn't seem to work too well. Why did you stop? I told this thing to run. Did I reset it? Did I lose it? Did it raise us all? That's weird. Five, four, two, seven, two. Plus R and D times two five comma R and D one times two five six. Go to no. It's in there. It's weird. It, it erases itself. Something happened. Is this program self-destructive? I don't think so. Me flipping the switch back and forth caused it to happen. I don't know. That don't sound too good. But there we go. We got that here. So we do know this works. So there we go. Part one's done. We have a working bread bin. All we, we need, we need a new SID chip. And then in part two, I will work on the floppy drive and see if that works. So I hope you enjoy this. Give me any comments down in the or leave me comments down below. Let me know what you think about the SID chip. Um, do I replace it? Do I leave? Do I take it out and not worry about it? Uh, obviously replace it, but do, should I at this point take it out and not worry? About, take it out, leave it in. Um, any other thing you want to tell me on how I can improve what I'm doing here? You just want to comment on what I did. Subscribe so you know when I'm ready to do the 1541, which should be in another week or two. Have a good day.